Dr. George Tiller has been killed. Now I want every pro-life leader, every pro-life activist watching this to listen with undivided attention because we are in a moment of crisis, but we're also in a teaching moment. Or as some of our bishops and our friends at the White House say, we want to have dialogue. George Tiller was a mass murderer. He had blood all over his hands. Now we grieve for him that he was shot in this deplorable manner and he did not have a chance to get things right with his maker, perhaps. Every man deserves a trial of a jury of his peers and then a proper execution, not to have somebody become judge, jury, and executioner on their own. Having said that, listen to me. We in the pro-life movement must not flinch. We must not fear. We must not waver. Here's what's going to happen. The pro-abortion groups, the Obama administration, the pro-abortion elements on Capitol Hill are going to try and take this moment and browbeat us into surrendering our best weapons of rhetoric, our best weapons of our actions, protests, and our most effective images, those of the dead babies. We must not surrender a single inch. He was a mass murderer. We have to say that over and over again. He was one of the most evil people on the planet. Every bit as evil as Nazi war criminals. Now I know that that offends some people that are watching this, but it is the truth. It is the truth from heaven's vantage point. According to the scriptures, the law of God, the teachings of the church, he was a mass murderer. And he reaped what he sowed. Now, the Obama administration is going to say, we must have dialogue. We shouldn't demonize the other side. Well, if child killing is what the church teaches that it is, a demonic act of murder, how can you not demonize something that is demonic? If you start saying, oh, we're peaceful, we're peaceful, and you let them seize this moment to make this debate about us, you will lose. Of course we're peaceful. That's why this sticks out. If abortionists were being killed every week, it would not make national news any more than crack dealers shooting each other every week does. This sticks out precisely because it is so unusual, because we are so peaceful. However, what they want is for us to surrender the words and the actions and the images of truth. If you look at other social revolutions in America's history, the women's voting rights movement, the, the movement to end slavery, the movement to end child labor, the civil rights activists who fought to end segregation, all of them used words that were incendiary and highly charged. All of them showed images that were gruesome to behold. All of them had actions that were in your face, protests, civil disobedience. All of them did. And if we are going to prevail in this fight, we have to use the playbooks of history. We have to use those same types of rhetoric, actions, and images in order to be successful. The Obama administration, the child killing groups, the, uh, the, the, the promoters of child killing on, on Capitol Hill, they're all going to try and browbeat us into surrendering those weapons of rhetoric, of actions, and of images. And we will not surrender. We will continue to show pictures of dead babies. We will continue to call people like George Tiller mass murderers. And we will continue to do protests at their offices, at their homes, and yes, at their churches. We will not surrender. So, if you're a pro-life leader, if you are getting a phone call from the press, use this as a teaching moment. We are not on trial here. We haven't done anything wrong. And when you hear Planned Parenthood or the NOW or somebody at the White House say, oh, it's the rhetoric of the pro-life movement is responsible, Laugh at them. Just laugh at them. Say, that's ridiculous. You're going to blame us because we tell you the truth about dead babies. You're going to blame us for what we say? Has anyone done an in-depth story on how George Tiller killed babies? On what he did with their poor bodies? On the number of children that were born alive after he tried to kill them and then he killed them in his office? If someone was going to be blamed for George Tiller's death, maybe it should be the authorities that let him continue killing babies like this. Maybe it should be 
the jury who didn't convict him when they had the evidence that he was performing illegal abortions. No, we're not to blame, friends. So, if you're a pro-life leader, if you're a pro-life activist, don't spend an inordinate amount of time saying we're peaceful because we are peaceful. Don't spend an inordinate amount of time saying what a horrible, deplorable act this is. Yes, of course, that's clear. Focus on what he did. Focus on who he was. Focus on the babies that have perished in unthinkable ways at his hands. And then this can be a teaching moment. And I want everyone who's watching this, you people in the Obama administration, you dear friends in the pro-life movement, you folks in the media, listen, we are not going to surrender a single inch. And we will prevail in our ultimate mission to make the killing of children illegal again from the moment of conception until the moment of birth. Until then, friends in the pro-life movement, don't fear, don't flinch, don't waver. Keep going forward. God bless you.